hi guys how you doing i hope you guys are doing good because i'm doing great as you guys can see so in today's video i'm going to be talking about what to do when you are the friend that has been left behind okay yes we talk about leaving friendships cutting people off letting go of relationships letting go of friendships how about we talk about when we are the ones that have been let go, when we are the ones that have been left behind in life generally by all our friends or some of our friends, how we can cope with that, okay? Because it is what it is. Sometimes you leave friends, sometimes friends leave you, okay? Let us stop pretending like we are the only ones that cut off, cut off, cut off. Sometimes they cut you off. <laughs> accept it you don't need to pretend like you're in control of all your friendships there are some friendships that you don't have control over things happen things change life happens to people and you get left behind instead of being bitter and you know upset and whatever how do we handle such situations okay i know that i cover a lot of relationships and friendship talks in my in my videos especially friendship talks and that's because let me tell you guys a secret okay 99% of my videos are for my daughters. I have three daughters in case you don't know. Hi, my name is Adizzi. I don't know if I introduce myself. But yes, I have three daughters. And some of these topics that I cover is not because they are the most popular on YouTube or because people like to watch them. It is because I am creating an avenue, a stash, okay, of advice and instructions of what to do and how to navigate life especially as women okay especially as young girls as girls as ladies as women whatever we call ourselves how to navigate life because the truth is that many of us were not taught these things many of us our parents did not even know our mothers did not even know these things because their mothers did not teach them okay so i'm here to break that cycle of keeping hush about these things and only teaching your daughters how to either make money we don't talk about how to make money sir. most times most times we teach they teach daughters how to you know be prim and proper how to be good girls how to you know keep themselves for their husbands and maintain and cook and uh, 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 okay those things are important i'm not going to say they're not important they are important but they are not all there is to us as human beings especially as women we are capable of a lot we are dynamic in nature we are so many things to so many people and we need to learn how to navigate all these different personalities and characters and you know responsibilities and all the things we have to be in this life we need to know how to go about them okay yeah so that is why i am having this conversation today those things we like to shy away from you guys know me now if nobody wants to talk about it i will talk about it i'm gonna talk about it okay <laughs> So there are times when in our lives we feel left behind by our friends, we feel left out, we feel rejected, you know, by people, we feel like, you know, things have changed in our relationships and our friendships and we feel like, you know, the energy has shifted and things are no longer how they used to be in our friendships and instead of us to, you know, understand what is happening and know how to deal with this, many of us just go into what I'll call, I don't know, hater mode. I'll call it hater mode. I can't, I don't know how else to explain it, but we turn to we turn into haters. We start making it look as if we are the ones that did the cutting off. We start making it look as if we don't care. We don't need these people. We don't need people. We don't need all this. Thing. We start we start you know doing too much instead of us to just sit down and understand what is happening to us. Okay, let me tell you something. Human beings are communal beings, we are relational beings in nature. We like and we strive on being included, okay? Inclusivity. <laughs> Inclusivity. We like to be included in stuff, okay? This is a natural human instinct. So when people come and talk about how they don't they don't need anybody, they like to cut people off, they don't they don't need I'm just like I beg Benesson, keep quiet. I don't know if I'm saying Benesson Benesson correctly. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. What does it what is keep quiet in, in Yoruba? Anyway, keep quiet, stop deceiving yourself. All human beings need people, okay? Yes, I would say that there is nobody that we can't live without, okay? There's no human being that you can't live without. Even newborn babies live without their mothers, okay? So there's no one human being that we can't live without. However, we cannot live without human beings in general. We can't live without others. We can't live without friendships, without relationships. That is why solitary confinement is one of the most cruel forms of um, punishment is the most one of the most cruel like it is emotionally and physically cruel to put somebody in, in solitary confinement and that is why it is reserved you know for very problematic people and very hardened criminals okay because it is a very very intense punishment for you to be separated or isolated from people okay like i said this is a human instinct and it stems back from 
the early years, from the years of the caveman, okay, where all of them had to be together because if anybody is separated from the pack, if anybody is left behind, they are more susceptible to being hurt or even killed. So it is a life and death situation or it was a life and death situation to be um, left behind by your pack, by your tribe, by your people. It was a life and death situation, okay? And even, at, even now, it is still a life and death situation or life or death situation. Not death in the physical sense, but it can be in the physical sense, okay? But not death in the physical sense, more like something emotionally, you know, dies in you. Something dies in you emotionally, okay? This weather is changing and everywhere is coming dark. You guys, as long as you can see this beauty, just continue listening. Okay, so, whenever I see people, you know, come on social media and talk about how they don't need people, how they don't need their friend, how they cut people off, how for them it's so easy to cut people off, I'm just like, you guys need to rest, okay? It doesn't make me see them as one strong, independent woman, no. It makes me see you as a little girl who is hurt and who refuses to address that hurt. Instead, she's lashing out, okay? I had somebody on my WhatsApp that I had to delete the person's number. Like, it went that far. I had to delete the person's number simply because she kept putting posts and posts about shading people, as if she was shading somebody in her post, okay? Personally, I don't really know her that well. I don't even know who in her life she was shading like that, okay? I'm just going to be honest. But I just could tell that every single post was a shade to somebody how friends are terrible friends how she can do without friends how she cuts people off when they start showing this and that when people when you think people are your friends but in the end they are this like you know you know those posts now when you guys see those posts i know some of you post those kind of posts so you know what i'm talking about all those posts where you are shading somebody who you were once you know very close friends with and then because something happened and the relationship is no longer you know what it is to be or you feel like they've left you behind you start shading them post after post after post let me tell you something let me tell you something let me tell you something <laughs> let me tell you something guys for me eh whenever i let go of any friendship i don't have energy to come and shade you on social media i don't like i simply don't like in fact it will kill me to shade you and then you catch your shade as in you catch the shade and you catch the sub it will pain me if I shade somebody and the person catches the shade and the person is supposed to be my friend or once used to be my friend, okay? I don't shade people on social media because at the end of the day, if I have moved on from you, if I have let you go, I don't remember you. And that's as in, this is facts, okay? I don't remember you. In fact, a lot of times, there are some friends that I had in the past that I don't even remember that we used to be friends. Like, I don't even remember their names. Some of them don't remember their names. Some of them I don't even remember that, oh, I was once friends with this person, though. Know? I don't even think about them, okay? I have so many things to think about in this life than to be spending time dwelling on a friendship that has ended or from someone that has moved on, okay? So for me, whenever it gets to that stage where you're shading somebody over and over again, it is obvious that you really love that person. It is obvious that you really want that friendship, you want that relationship. Maybe you want them to come and beg you. Maybe you want them to cut their sob and somehow feel hurt and come and try to be friends with you again. I don't know what the aim of that thing is. If you need somebody, if you need a friendship, just come out openly and say that you need that friendship, okay? Confront the person, tell them where they hurt you, ask them what is going on. If you now see that, oh, this person is really has really moved on, this person doesn't want to be friends with you anymore, then it's okay to just let the person go and just wish them good luck, okay? Have good intentions towards them. Like I keep saying, I don't really have any friend that I will say, if I see tomorrow, I will shun the person or I won't talk to the person. I don't have anybody else in my life. Anybody that used to be friends with me, Tomorrow we can still become best of friends. I mean best like fr best of friends like this And I mean it because before I became your friend before I put that friend title on it I realized that I actually liked you and I want you in my life So there's nobody in my life right now that is an ex-friend I don't even think I have any ex-friends. I just have friends that have you know, been distanced from my you know, things I've done to it. But even if I had like an ex-friend, I don't have any ex-friend in my life that I'll say there's no possibility of us being friends tomorrow. No. It's funny how me and somebody might even have an issue. And when I see the person the next time, I will forget that we had an issue. It's when I finish talking and laughing with you and catching up and, you know, being happy with you. Maybe I don't remember that, hey, this person did this thing to me. Oh. But anyway, let me just move on. That's, that's the way my life is, okay? And this is coming from somebody who can actually stay without people. Trust me when I tell you that I can stay one whole month straight without talking to anybody, just be in my house, have food, have television. I can stay one whole month straight without talking to anybody, no beef, no nothing, and I'll be fine. Like, I'll be happy, I'll be thriving. I'll, in fact, I'll even thrive more, self. Okay? However, after that, my one month or six weeks or ten, whatever, it, whatever the duration is of staying alone, after that time, at some point, I still need human interaction, okay? And I'm not afraid to admit that I still need human interaction. And I will go and after that human interaction, and I'll pursue that human interaction without any whatever reservation. 
there's one recurring topic of discussion that anytime I hear it, eh, it irritates my soul. Like it, it stresses me out whenever I hear it, okay? And that conversation is about how married women or when women get married, they leave their single friends behind. I'm like, what are you talking about? I have so many manage, marriage friends, okay? I have so many friends that are married today that are still friends with their single friends. One of my best friends in the entire universe, in the whole wide world. I love everything about her. One of my best friends in the whole world is still single. Okay, even though I'm looking for a husband for her, I'm going to be the mother of the day at her wedding. Her mother is still alive, shall But I'm going to be the mother of the day at her wedding. <laughs> the co-mother of the day. No, but seriously, she's one of my best friends in the world and she's still single. I don't feel some, some type of way about her being single. I don't feel like bringing her close to me. My Fun fact, she's actually very close to my husband. Like She's actually, in fact, I feel like her, my husband, on a professional level, she relates more with my husband because me i'm not even in her field in any way so whatever she has my husband's number she can call him whenever she wants i don't feel like oh she will now go and snatch my husband or, like i don't know whenever i hear that kind of thing this is like oh my god like it irritates my soul when people talk like that okay now are there people who actually get married and you know shun their single friends yes there are okay but they are very few and these women most times are abused women it's not that like they, they genuinely don't want to be friends with those people it is because their husbands have conditioned them to think that they shouldn't be friends with such people and and their husbands are making them cut those people off. The instances where women on their own decide to cut friends off, single friends off, a lot of times you will see that those women have issues on their own normally, okay? That one self day. Or two, they were not actually real friends. Some of you were not actually real friends. I don't know why we just like slapping that label on everything. That you have somebody that you know you, you, you vibe with, you flow with. Sometimes you guys are just friends or you guys are just together for a particular purpose. Okay, maybe you guys like partying together and you always jam yourself in different parties. You know, you now say, oh, my friend. She's not your friend. You guys just like f f hanging out together. Some of you, it is runs. <laughs> you guys are runs girls together. And then the girl has moved on and gotten married and she started to cut you off knowing that you're a runs girl. And then you're like, oh my God, she's not cutting me off because she's married. No, that's not what happened. Okay, she just left you behind in your runs life, okay? No shade to anybody. I'm not trying to, you know, judge you for your I'm, I'm judging i'm judging i think i'm judging i'm judging i'm not even going to lie i'm judging you yeah whatever so <laughs> when people are genuine friends okay most times people hardly cut off their genuine friends they hardly do it they hardly do it as in just because they got married they hardly do it okay because most times self that your genuine friend shortly after she will get married too or maybe while you're getting married she's engaged or while you're engaged you know she's dating and then as things are changing for you things are also changing for you okay so before you know what's happening both of you are now both married and you're still and you're still friends before you know what's happening maybe you had your kids first before you know what's happening she has had her own kids as well so two of you now become friends i mean two of you now become um, you know mom friends another thing that we even need to take note of is that sometimes it is in your head yeah it is in your head it is what you are thinking that is affecting you it's not actually what is happening in the real sense of things okay if you really look deeply into what is happening you will see that you are the one that is just misconstruing things you are the one that just they're just coming into that relationship with preconceived notions so when anything just resembles what you already think you just conclude that that is what is happening okay not realizing that you are actually practicing self-destruction or self-prophecy where you are anticipating something to happen and then because you're anticipating that thing to happen you are now acting in such a way that now makes that thing happen you now say i said it i said it but meanwhile it wasn't the case it was you that made it happen so a lot of times it is even the single women that let go of their mar married friendships a lot of times okay and i'm saying it with my full chest a lot of times it is the single women that let go of their married friendships and i don't even blame them for that okay i don't blame them for that because if you're feeling like a third wheel, if you're feeling left out, if you feel like, you know, conversations with this person is no longer what it used to be, this person is now going on and on and on about her husband and her marriage and stuff like that, and you can't relate. It is okay to say, you know what, this friendship is not really what it used to be. Let me just move on. Let me just find other friends. Let me go to other single women and I can relate well with them. It is not a bad thing, okay? So don't make it look as if that your married friend became a bad friend simply because you guys no longer vibe together or she's not talking about her husband. This, my friend, that I told you guys is one of my best friends in the whole universe our conversations now are not exactly what they used to be okay even though I met her when I was married but before I had kids okay our conversations now are not really 
personal in that sense. Like, we don't just sit down and talk about my husband and my children all day. We have other things to talk about, okay? We have, we talk about my, my husband and my children, no, don't get me wrong. We talk about her love life as well, but by and large, our conversations are not really about that, okay? It's about so many other things, and our friendship is still intact. And another thing that happens, aside the married single dynamics, another thing that happens in friendships in general is that sometimes, you that you are feeling left behind, you have not searched yourself yet, okay? You have not searched your soul. You have not really looked inwards to see whether you are the kind of friend that those your friends really need or those your friends really want to even have around them. You've not even searched yourself to ask yourself, are you a good friend? Okay, if you, if you were cloned now, your personality and all of that were cloned and that person was brought to you as a friend, will you be friends with that person? Ask yourself that question in all honesty, okay? Be self-aware, okay? Self-awareness is very important. Let me tell you something about me here. Eh? There's nothing you want to come and tell me about me right now that I don't already know, okay? You must be a very strong psychologist that has studied me for years to tell me something new about myself. Because before you even start studying me, I have studied myself over and over again. I have, I have come to some conclusions on my own. I have come to some realizations on my own. I know exactly the kind of friend I am in my friendships. I know who I am in my friendships. I am not really the um, um, expressive type, right? I'm not the one that will call you all the time or call you all day because I don't even call anybody all day. Like, in fact, I call my friends. If I call, if I call my friends once a day, just know so that I've not called anybody in that week. <laughs> As in, I'm just trying to put this in perspective. Like, I'm not really a calling type. So if I even manage to call my friend once in a week, not that I've not called other people like in, in months, okay? So I'm not the, the expressive type. I'm not the type that would, you know, want to hang out all the time, want to go out, want to party. Want, I'm not that kind of person. I prefer, I'm a whole body. I can stay in my house and just talk to you on the phone and I'm fine, okay? However, I know that you cannot accuse me of not being there for you when you needed me, okay? I'm that kind of friend that... When you need me for something, I will, I will do that thing for you very well. Like, I will be there for you very well when you need me, okay? So if my friends come to them and tell me, oh, Ada, you don't really call, you're not really an emotional person, you're not really expressive when it comes to, you know, emotional things, I will agree with you 100%. Even my husband complains about it, okay? So why? Who do you think you are? <laughs> Even my husband that I married and I'm in a romantic relationship with, I'm not emotional with him. I'm not that emotional with him, okay? So if my friends are complaining about it, they have a right to complain about it because I know for a fact that that is who I am, okay? So if my friends are not complaining that I'm not an emotional person, I will not see it as, oh, this is my friends always complain a lot. This is my friends are not really a good friend. They don't really, they don't really, they don't really like me. They don't really do this one for me. No, I won't see it that way. I'll see it as, okay, my friend wants me to be more emotional, but I'm not that kind of person, and I'm sorry about it, but it is what it is. If that is what that person really, really needs from me, and I cannot give it, I will understand that, okay, I'm not being the kind of friend person needs, and if person decides to move on or have other friends that will give them that, it's okay, it's all well and good. Like, it's no beef there, okay? I will just understand that I'm not the kind of friend that this person needs. Shikena, another thing that you need to take note of when you feel like you are being left behind, especially when it seems like, you know, the friends that you used to be friends with are moving on and doing bigger things in life and they've left you behind because of the bigger things they are doing, maybe it is a wake-up call for you to actually change some things that you are doing so that you can actually move up as well with them. For me, I see it as encouragement. I see it as, you know, motivation to like, even move on, to even do more. Because I know this person, I'm like, uh-uh, is this not this my friend of yesterday? She's now doing big things like this. That means I can do it too. Okay, I don't see it as, oh my God, she's now doing this. That's why she's now feeling cool with herself. That's why she has now left me. I don't know I'm doing this voice. Why am I doing this voice? <laughs> That's why, that's why she's not left me behind. That's why she's now looking down on me. No, nobody can look down on me, please. I'm so high up there that you can't even look down on me, okay? She's now looking down on me. She now feels like I'm no longer the type of friend that she needs. No, I don't see it that way, okay? It might be the case, and until I investigate it and find out that that is the case, then that's when I know, okay, I can now react the other way. But if I have not investigated this, if I have not really done much to really question that situation, why am I complaining? Why am I arguing? Like, it is normal. It is normal for somebody to move up in life and become more busy. Okay? That's why when people give promotions, they're like, ah, promotions is sweet though when you get promotion because you get more money. But you get more responsibilities as well. You might see all these billionaires today and think that they don't have anything doing. Okay, now. Nah. 
go and be in their shoes and see how many hours they sleep a day. I know that as women, as ladies, we like to feel as if, oh, I'm a bad bee. I mean, I'm not a bad bee, I'm a bad bee, I'm a very good girl in Jesus' name, okay? But some people like to feel like, oh, I'm a bad bee, I'm this, I'm that, I'm too much, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're not perfect. Everybody has something to work on in their lives. Okay, like I said, before you come and tell me my own, I'll tell you 10 that I know that I'm even trying to work on, or I won't say I'm working on them, but I know I'm supposed to work on them. Okay, so understand that you're not perfect as a human being as well. So if people are moving on from you, if your friendships are breaking up, you know, one kind, if your friendships are ending in the same way over and over again, maybe you should do some soul searching and just change and then move on. Okay, you don't have to now go back to those same people and be friends with them. You can make better friendships, but also be careful of those better friendships that you make because you will still repeat the same patterns if you're not careful. <sighs> I think I'm going to end this conversation here. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know some other things that I did not mention that you can do when you feel like you are being left behind, okay? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.